So the entire thesis of this channel is that books are important, that the stories that we read, especially the stories that we read as children, YA is super important because it tells us what types of behaviors are likely to lead to success, you know, what types of people can be successful, why they're successful, all that kind of stuff. And when I was growing up in the 80s, one of the books that was in almost every library in Ontario was the Gordon Corman Bruno and Boots books. And in particular, I want to talk about one which is called Go Jump in the Pool. Go Jump in the Pool is the story of Bruno and Boots who go to an all boys boarding school and their attempts to raise enough money for their school to get a pool. This is incredibly important to them because Boots is at risk of being put into a different school, breaking up the romance of Bruno and Boots. Boots is at risk of being sent to a different school that has a pool because his dad is an Olympic swimmer. So the vast majority of this book is Bruno and Boots, the lovable rogues, Bruno much more <laughs> roguish than Boots, trying to raise $25,000 in order to get a pool. And shenanigans ensue. So the poor headmaster is like, how can I cope with all these fundraising activities? The parents of the boys are starting to get irritated because they keep on being asked for money to contribute to these things that are being done in order to raise money. And towards the end, they are basically banned from doing anything else. And at this point, we have yet another boy come into the fray. So we've had, you know, Bruno and Boots are our protagonists, but there are um, boys throughout the school, you know, there's the artistic boy, there is the science boy, there are all these different types, you know, there's the fat kid, there's, everybody has the stereotype boy, and now all of a sudden we have the boy who is into the stock market. Money, said a voice at the next table. Did someone mention money? Bruno and Boots turned to see George Wexford Smith III regarding them with great interest. So again, like the name even tells you that people who are interested in money, who get the stock market, like they're in a completely different class. Like we're already at a boarding school, but like he's the third. Um, We've been trying to raise money for a pool, Bruno told him. I wouldn't expect you to understand that. It's vulgar. So again, like very much othering anybody who's interested in money. But at the same time, like these guys have been like scamming and entrepreneurial the whole way through. George picked up his yogurt and came over to join them. I wonder if yogurt was like a signifier at that time too, quite possibly. Money, especially in vast quantities, is never vulgar, he said. Why don't you tell me all about it? Where have you been, asked Boots. Don't you know about the swimming pool? George looked mystified. The budget won't allow us to buy a pool and we're in danger of losing students to York Academy because of it. That's why we've been trying to raise $25,000, so we can beat those turkeys at the next swim meet and keep our fathers happy. You mean, said George, all the horrid things that have been going on around the campus were for money. Bruno and Boots nodded. Well, that makes it different, declared George. How much did you raise? About 7500 said Bruno. Hmm, and you need 25000 That shouldn't be difficult. What? My dear Bruno, said George, didn't Melvin, Boots, tell you that I'm a financial giant? It's true, exclaimed Boots breathlessly. Okay, said Bruno, but how are you going to take $7,500 and turn it into 25000 With considerable ease, said George smugly. The stock market, of course. I happen to have an inside tip on a mining stock. If you will give me my, your money, I will invest it for you. Hold on just a minute, said Bruno. I don't know much about the stock market, but if you can make money, you can also lose money. What if we buy and the stock goes down? George stiffened. My stocks never go down. Boots nodded. That's true too. Okay. So then <laughs> there are so many things to unpack here. Uh, if you are, again, Canadian who grew up around the time that I did and was at all interested in the news, then as soon as you hear mining stocks, you think Brie X. Uh, which was a stock that went up very quickly and then turned out to be a complete fraud uh, with, you know, murderous things potentially happening. Uh, yeah, so there were some shenanigans. I've never looked into it again as an adult, so I probably should. 
But there are some important things that end up happening. So Bruno is much more ambitious and much more risk tolerant, wants to take out all the money at once, throw it into the market, see how it does. Boots is very conservative and he is basically browbeaten into putting more money in. They put in money in little chunks and it goes up and it goes down in a little bit and they have like FOMO and then they have regret. And then at a certain point, there is complete euphoria as the entire school gets really excited about like all this money in the stock markets. And they end up doing exceptionally well, making more than their $25,000. And then just as like everybody is like, okay, like to the moon, we can keep on riding this all the way up. Their stock guy says, no, we're pulling it now. And I think that Again, going back to these stories that like we get from books that we read as children, this taught me some bad things. Um, one of them was is that entrepreneurs didn't look like me. It's not that you know Bruno and Boots were male and I'm female. Um, they have their counterparts across the street of the girls who are also at a boarding school who have you know great agency and are very fun characters. It wasn't the gender, it was the who they were as people. Um, and they were, you know, outgoing and they had lots of friends and they had all this stuff. And so the personalities were so different from who I was. I couldn't see how I was ever going to do well as an entrepreneur because I wasn't that type of person. Similarly, they did well in the stock market, but they only did well because they had an inside tip and they knew somebody who was really geeky on the subject. And I was obviously neither of those. So again, looking at investing as something that was for other people, not for myself, and looking at like those big opportunities as something for others actually probably ended up being pretty good for me because I ended up deciding that like something that was closer to indexing made more sense. And even before I understood what indexing was, I was going down that path of, I'm not trying for the big wins. I'm like going to go for like the slow sustainable wins that are like in keeping with who I am. But I don't think that's just luck. That wasn't um, something that was supported by the stories that I was reading as a child. The stories I was reading as a child was that I was going to be a stick in the mud and, you know, I was going to just always have to grind it out and that's not true either. So this is a, just a place where I think that the stories that we read as a kid, which then connect into the narratives that we tell ourselves and the narratives that the rest of the world tells us, really can compound into something that's not so positive for us and it takes a lot of time to unpack later on and figure out that actually there are ways to be successful even if you aren't the popular one even if you aren't the outgoing one even if you aren't the person who's willing to take a lot of risks there are lots of ways to still do well and to mitigate those risks that like don't get into YA novels because they don't tell the same kind of fun story so this book was obviously stolen from the library because it still has one of those little envelopes with the cards in the bottom, but uh, I don't know which of us it is because uh, it isn't signed out in either of our names. Um, all it says is that it was uh, room number 29. So probably actually my partner's and not mine, but uh, yes, we did consolidate our Gordon Cormans when we got together. I don't think that Go Jump in the Pool is my favorite Gordon Corman. I think that I much prefer Beware the Fish, which has like this whole spy motif going on. And also The War with Mr. Whistle, which is the story of how much they hated their computer science teacher, which is a trip because like, damn, computer science in the 70s and 80s is different than today. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, what books did you take the wrong lessons from? Uh, that you read as a kid. Love to hear about it. As always, take care and talk to you again later. Bye. I do wish that at the end of this book there was that recipe for the apple horseradish cake. That could be fun. Uh, I also haven't looked in Google to see if anybody's got one of those up and out there. So um, maybe one day uh, when we've got some extra apples floating around, I'll try to do that.